Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we do soap opera reviews. I want to thank everybody for coming to my channel as well. Like and share my videos, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I would definitely appreciate it. Okay, the soap opera story we're going to be going over today is The Young and the Restless that aired on Friday, June 3rd, 2016. Eastern Standard Time, 3 o'clock. We have a summary that I would like to give you all prior to going into the episode. It says Jill's, Jill makes a shocking discovery. However, Jill wasn't really present in uh, today's episode, so I'm not really sure where that came from. Okay, then we have Chelsea's questions Adam's motives. Victor is busted. Adam tells Nicholas where he can go in the future if he decides not to help him now. And then lastly, we have Ian has a visit from Adam. Okay, the first scene of the day is Victor and Dr. Baxter. But it's not Dr. Baxter, it's a new doctor. Anyway, he's in the uh, infirmary waiting for Dr. Gates to uh, make a visit to him. But... Uh, Victor is has his back towards the door and when he hears it opens um, of course he's not looking at the door because he has his back turned he's saying um, I hope you slept well last night and then the man voice which makes Victor turns around startled he says uh, in fact I did oh Lord I tell you Victor mm -mm -mm. we go to Ian Ian is expecting a visitor to come out and see him. <coughs> then we take it to Paul and Michael. Michael is explaining to Paul about Nicholas' decision of not exhuming um, the body of Constance Bingham again. Adam, Chelsea, and Sharon. Sharon has come over because she, uh, Chelsea has asked her to come over to do some work on Chelsea's 2.0. Or she thinks it is about Chelsea's 2.0. But that's not true. We go to Nicholas and Dylan. <coughs> Nicholas is bringing back Faith's hair bow. After the father and daughter dance that she left in the car. And they're both making small talk with each other. You know they have the same mother which is Nikki. So they're making small talk with each other. That eventually turns into some serious talk. But it's all good. It's between brothers, right? We go to Nicholas. Uh, we stay with Nicholas and Dylan. Dylan is saying he wants justice done in the Constant Bingham's case. And he suggests to Nicholas um, how he feels that may uh, be a way to find justice and to possibly get uh, his brother Adam off the chopping block. Okay, we have Sharon, Chelsea, and Adam. Adam is explaining to Sharon that he's sorry for everything he's done to her. Sharon says she knows. Don't worry about it. It's all in the past. But she knows in her heart of hearts that he's not a murderer. He was okay with that particular situation because, like I said, Chelsea had falsely brought Sharon or asked her to come over to her house to do some work on Chelsea's 2.0. Uh, designs and stuff and that's not what she wanted she wanted to pretty much ask Sharon to um, talk to Nicholas is what it was but we leave that situation and we go back to it in a sense um, that was the next scene so I'm sorry about that Chelsea's asking Sharon to help her out with something Sharon is kind of perplexed not really understanding really why she was asked to come over there but as time prevails throughout the episode, we'll certainly get the reason why she wanted her to come. Here we go to Dylan and Nicholas. Dylan is asking for the second examination of Constance Bingham's body. He's asking Nicholas to do it to get to the truth. And Nicholas is expressing, are you saying you have bad cops in the department and you thinking somebody sabotaged the first simp uh, uh, tissue samples? And Dylan's not really, really wanting to admit. He said his dad, Paul, runs a tight ship. But sometimes money being flashed, especially the kind Victor Newman throws around, it can be tempting. So we go to Mike and Paul. Paul said he has a very tight friendship 
with Dr. Gates because he was going over the comes and goings of interviewing Dr. Gates when he was out there at the prison and she, he was telling Michael he's she's a very strong advocate of Victor and with Victor being in jail that limited amount of time there's no way in the world she would have gotten uh, so close to Victor without him having a motive and giving her a lot of intimate information about him and his family so you know they both agree Victor goes to uh, extreme lengths to get what he wants even fostering a fictitious somewhat relationship while he's in jail uh, Michael said it's all hearsay of the um, pretty much the stories that is going on with Adam even the diary they both agree and if it can be they both agree that Victor can be a monster at times to get his way. Uh, we have the new doctor and Victor. Victor is concerned about why Dr. Gates left her position. The new doc go on uh, looking and trying to examine uh, him or why he's here. And he's pretty not much trying to really give Victor any insight to where Dr. Uh, Meredith Gates is. He just said, hey, she's permanently been replaced or she's not coming back to the infirmary that's all he knows so it uh you know he's kind of perplexed about it but he's gonna get to it sooner or later so we go back to ian and adam ian is pleased to see adam and he goes over past times together or they both go with past times because you know we've never seen ian get any visits so any visit to him is uh, a pleasure i'm sure we go to victor and the doctor again uh, pretty much Victor was telling the new doctor that his medical records are kept in a separate room and he tries to help him out or at least the doctor feels Victor is trying to help him out but when he gets back and sees uh, Victor on the phone after retrieving his records from next door he has a second take on Victor <laughs> um, what do you call it uh, help that he was trying to give him about you know where to find his charter he, he knows it was a setup just to get him out the room um, but during that time that he was gone Victor called Dr. Gates to see where she was why she not coming back what happened this that and the third okay we leave there we go to Chelsea and Sharon Chelsea is asking Sharon to talk with Nicholas about exhuming the body of Constance Bingham again we know why pretty much uh, Sharon I want no more exhuming of the body to bring it unraveling at her front door but Sharon don't want to talk to Nicholas and she said no 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 she's not going to talk to him about this issue or any other issue where it is concerning Sage uh, Dylan and Nicholas we go back to them Dylan feels one of his guys may be on the tape he trusts Paul but there's a lot to learn about his new dad you know they're just you know uh well i'm sorry his new boss uh and he's kind of just really very concerned about everything uh he knows nick is his mother he knows nicky and them are best friends and whatnot but it just is what it is and you know he's his dad as well so well no, i'm sorry nicholas is his brother paul is his friend Shoot, I'm kind of confused myself. I know Dylan is, but I'm wondering if that was the baby that him and Nick had together. So, but anyway, it just it, it, it's a family issue, and it's, the dynamics are pretty strong. But like I said, he's just getting to know Paul. Don't really know of him that well. However, uh, he, trusts his, he trusts his Paul's instincts and his ability to get to the truth. But sometimes he may be a little lenient on his staff and wanting to trust everybody on his staff and not distrust anybody uh, to be working under him to be uh, disrespectful nor deceitful. So he has to learn a little bit more on uh, Paul before he can really ascertain whether he's on the true side of finding out the truth of this matter or not. But anyway, Nicholas says he's glad Dylan is his problem. Okay, we go to Ian and Adam. Um, Ian thinks Adam is paying him a social call, but Adam wants Ian's help with Victor. He's trying to align himself with Ian to get information on Victor uh, to see if he would uh, tell him some incriminating evidence about setting uh, Adam up. We go to commercial. We come back from commercial. We have Chelsea and Sharon. Uh, Chelsea is not understanding why Sharon is denying 
uh, to talk to Nicholas about assuming Constance being about it. She is really feeling kind of some way, and she is tearing into sharing about it. Uh, we go back to Victor and the new doctor. Victor is explaining to the doctor he was making a call to check on his children because one of his sons, which is Adam, is being accused of murdering someone. But we do know for a fact who he was calling, so we know Victor gonna always dismiss the truth when he's trying to find out something he wants to know. So, um, the doctor didn't, well, yeah, the doctor did say he was gonna report him right after he leaves him to the ward. So that's another checklist for uh, Victor for the negative why he's being um, held up in prison. We go to Ian and Adam again. Ian is wishing he was Adam's father. Adam is telling Ian Victor framed him. He explains to Ian the diary and about Sage and about Constance Bingham being over 500 years old and she pretty much died, you know, uh, natural causes. He didn't poison her and if she did die of poison it wasn't him. And um, they both mince words about trying to do one hand washes the other type of scenario. And I don't know why they keep saying Constance being like 300, 500 years old just because the lady looked at old or whatnot or made her up to look old. It's just kind of crazy uh, to me. But anyway, Victor uh, he wants Ian, well, Adam wants Ian to get Victor to snitch. Ian wants his freedom. He will help Adam if Adam comes, get him, can get him out of prison as well. Ian, Ian is just crazy, crazy as they come. So I don't know what uh, Adam is doing, trying to line himself back up with this crazy ass man. But anyway, we go to Dylan and Nicholas. Dylan is explaining that they both like the truth, and Adam and Victor do not. He's still trying to get Nicholas to help him out. Sharon walks in and uh, practically falls down after hearing Nick says uh, what type of guy uh, would take a child from another man. So she's pretty much like in shock thinking they had found out her secret, but it is so far from the truth. But Nick, I mean, um, Sharon Mauer just gone and give it up and just let the chills fall what it may. But She's trying to be a strong G and trying to hold in her secrets, but they're going to unravel. And she's going to lose more than what she anticipates. Anyway, we go um, to Sharon and Nicholas. Uh, Sharon is asking Dylan, is getting, well, actually Dylan is getting a hold of Sharon because they both noticed that she had took a, a step and um, took a misstep and was falling to the floor. If she didn't have that railing uh, going towards the door, she would have hit the floor. So basically, Dylan goes over there and she, he walks um, Sh Sharon closer to the sofa so they can both sit down and she can kind of hear what they're talking about. But um, Nick is pretty much gets into it with Sharon and the both of them about exhuming uh, Constance Bingham body. Of course, uh, Sharon is on Nicholas' side. But he just tells them both goodbye because he's tired of talking about the issue and it's just not right as a travesty and he's not going to play a part on at this time trying to zoom her body for a second or uh, go around on her tissue sample so it is what it is we move from there we go to michael and paul michael's telling paul to look at all sides paul is not believing that one of his cops or even a few of his cops are on the take and dirty as michael is trying to paint them as possibly being uh we go to chelsea and adam adam has gotten back with chelsea and he asked chelsea or does she have any good news to tell him adam is being, is telling her about his visit with ian and uh we go to adam i mean ian and victor ian is watching victor clean his tables as one of his job job duties as being in prison and he's telling Victor you missed the spot you no know, just trying to pick Adam and shit so then we go to Chelsea and Adam Chelsea is telling Adam Ian is evil he is the devil incarnate <laughs> Adam says when everybody you trust won't help you you have to go seek out your enemies for help I ain't never tried that before but hey He's learning me a little something. Don't think I ever go that way, but it is what it is. Okay, we have Ian and Victor. Ian is cleaning Victor's table that he was doing. Ian is saying what happened uh, to their 
plan to get out of there or getting out of jail since the good doctor is gone. Victor tells Ian to stay away from him. Ian is rubbing Victor's, uh, well, he's worrying him about or talking about Victor's family, leaving him in jail. And he goes to tell uh, Ian to stay away from him, stay away from his family, or he will uh, see him again and it won't be uh, peaceful. We go back to Dylan and Sharon. Dylan is asking Sharon why is he so against Nick finding out the truth. Sharon is just making uh, excuses, but she knows exactly well because it exposed her not being the mother of uh, Sully, nor Dylan being the father. Okay, and she just can't take that risk. We go to Nicholas, Adam, and Chelsea. Nicholas goes over to see Adam and Chelsea and to tell them to stop sending people to him to get him to change his mind about assuming Constance Bingham body. And of course, Adam and um, Nicholas get in a very heated argument and pretty much Adam has just said, look, if you're not going to help me and I end up going to jail, it is what it is. And then Victor starts to leave him alone because he got him where he wants, wants him, which is in jail. And he starts on you putting out fictitious um, facts about you that everybody's believing. Don't come to my doorstep thinking I'm going to help you because I'm going to do you just the same as you're doing me, leaving me out to try. So then that's when Nicholas looks at him strangely and he leaves. We go to commercial and we go back to Paul and Michael. Paul is looking at getting an interview with all of the people that were around when they had to do the autopsy on Constance Bingham. Just to check his eyes, dotting them and crossing his T's so Michael can pretty much get off of him and get back to another plan of action of trying to um, get Adam off if that's in case the fact that Victor is trying to frame his son. We go to Sharon and Dylan. Sharon is trying to deflect uh, that she don't want to be around the Newmans. She don't want to be caught up in the Newmans web anymore. She being got rid of them. She wants to stay as far away as she can from them. And she's not wanting to worry about Nicholas' problems. Uh, but Sharon is just trying to hide. We all know what she is trying to hide as well. We go back to Adam. Adam is begging his brother to help him out. He also says if he Victor, if he is Victor's next victim, like I said, don't come calling on him to help. Nicholas walks out. So I, I kind of told you that prior to it being in the scenes. But we go to our last and final scene. We have Ian and Victor. Ian is trying to pump Victor for answers. Victor does... Uh, not answer him he even gives him the little solution to spray on the table to clean it and he tells him to do a nice job and Victor walks out like a G a true G so that was the Young and the Restless for Friday June 3rd 2016 that aired at um, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and it was exciting because I, I tell you they got so many twists and they put so many people in jail along with Victor. Hell I don't know what they gonna have a whole clan up in the jail. Who gonna be running Newman who, and, and who gonna be taking care of the kids if all their asses are locked up. It was pretty humorous at times but again I'll be back God willing on the 6th of june giving you more play by play blow by blow of the young and the rest of guys you all have a beautiful weekend and a nice saturday evening and i will see you on monday or i will be narrating and showing you my uh images from today's episodes or that particular episode we're going over that particular day which will be monday guys take care blessings